Thank you so much, Gigi. Guys, I'm, I'm literally shaking. I have a visa appointment for tomorrow. It was meant to be for the 15th of March. The two months away. I just checked on a whim and I rescheduled my appointment for the 14th of January. As, it, as it's called in san sacred. I watch too many people play. I'm listening to The Secrets of a Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Ecker. It was recommended to me by someone on YouTube. It is now the 4th of January and I am going to film a COVID related video in Pitt Street Mall today. Outfit of the day, I love brown belts. I'm just vlogging. Okay guys, so we're just uh, asking questions at Pitt Street now. This is my friend Tori. Hey. I have this huge ass camera and I'm definitely stepping out of my comfort zone right now. How many people said no to me? Like half, you, would you say? Yeah. Probably maybe, like maybe half. more at the end. Yeah, I actually came like pretty confident. I was like, oh, I'm like gonna do this. This is gonna be fine. And then people started to say no and I'm just like, Everyone after, a lot of people after two started saying no. For some reason, everyone before that, most people opened. Yeah, I'm almost done and I'm excited. Let's keep on going. I believe in you. Oh. <sighs> so, things are going back to its scheduled programming. As you can see from the before footage, I've probably added my journey of moving to New York. Let's give you the lowdown really quickly and i'm sorry not sorry i'm wearing absolutely no makeup because i'm going to a party tonight and i want to have a fresh face basically after i finished my last class of uni i flew out the next day to new york for two weeks and before this i never wanted to move anywhere in the world and then i realized this is where i temporarily want to be working basically in 2019 i realized that i was going to take the plunge and actually move there but i have already booked a whole europe trip in September of that year and this was March when I officially decided like I'm gonna take this series I was like, you know what? I'm gonna brush up on my resume and my skills and just slowly work towards it I'm not gonna be applying to any jobs now after I traveled everywhere I came back in September and I didn't realize how hard it was going to be I told my friend Naz we're on the same journey on the same path We both wanted to move to a different country and work there She has moved to Dubai by the way, which is so amazing and incredible and I'm so proud of her because we've literally been talking about this for like I think a year. I didn't realize that resumes in the US go through an ATM system, which is an automatic tracking system. And it's like, if you don't match the keywords to the job description and the resume, it gets spit out basically. I only realized that maybe December 2019, when I really, really buckled down. I did apply in September and October and, and November sort of as a practice run because I didn't know how it was gonna be. And I sort of just wanted to implement like practicing applying for jobs. And in December, I felt like I got everything down pat. I knew how to write the perfect perfect cover letter for my industry in New York. I knew how to tailor my resume to perfection. I knew that I needed to find HR and email them on LinkedIn and then find people that work there and email them and just connect with other people and basically essentially get as much advice as possible. And that started to work. I got an interview with Wall Street Journal. I got an interview with a small startup called Small Spider Studios. I got another interview with another uh, startup company called The Zone, and I got an interview with Fox News, basically. Not basically, it was Fox News. And I went to basically the final rounds of a lot of them, including Fox News and Wall Street Journal. Shout outs to Josh, who interviewed me for the first time. That would have happened, but they reconstructed their department. I was gonna be hired for a social video producer. I was nonstop going to interviews, and it felt like I was was just about to basically get it but to no avail I just didn't and I learned so much from everything from all of my experiences the world started to freak out during March I remember going on LinkedIn every day applying for jobs in March and there was just nothing obvious I mean I was trying like balls to the wall so hard in March and April still like I refuse to believe that like I wouldn't be able to get a job during coronavirus but there was literally no job application as things started to pick back up I started feeling a little bit burnt out and we've been in lockdown all this time and things started to open back up in Australia as well I started dating this guy <laughs> I got a little bit distracted, I'm not gonna lie. And also, I was burnt out, you guys. Like, I had been hustling. I wrote down every single position I applied for, every company that I applied for, and it was like, I wrote down 350, but I didn't write down all of them. Looking at that document and being like, wow, I applied to this many places. I've essentially, like, prioritized looking for jobs since September 2019 on to, you know, at that time, you know, July 2020. 
and to no avail nothing is happening four months yeah four months i didn't do anything i was dating i was traveling around like australia or new south wales because the borders were closed and i was like i just want to live my best life things are going to come to me and i just need a break and then i'm like i'm going to buckle down that's it october 2020 no excuses and i was applying applying i got through the final stages of a job a company called wave tv and they were great i literally did four interviews zoomed with them the interview process was so smooth had an hour final interview towards the end and then they told me oh like we didn't realize anyways it didn't it didn't work out because they didn't realize that i lived in australia and luckily as soon as that all happened a full-time position opened up at dailymail.com which is the u.s daily mail and the process began what was happening at the very start was the form was incorrect in the wrong details and I needed to restart the process over again. I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to do it because of different sort of circumstances, but I'm so happy to say that it's happening. It's like the perfect time. I've learned so much. I'm like, if I moved this time last year, I would not have been ready. This is just the beginning of the visa process. So what I did was help my employer fill out the LCA and it just got accepted today, which is the first step of being accepted for the E3 visa. Right now I'm going to be doing the D160 application, which takes about two to three hours to do let's go i'm going to the pharmacy i'm finished work now it's 5 p.m i sent over all of the details for my employer to finish filling out including the job offer and the supporting letter and a signed lca form tonight i'm going to be filling out this application form and booking my visa interview which is so exciting that was a whirlwind but we got there in the end. I was literally trudging through rain. Got there 20 minutes before they closed and I got my photos. Now the only thing is, it's meant to be a little bit more even and I don't know, he asked me if everything was okay and I'm pretty sure that it is, but it's like not evenly lit. I'm about to test this photo. I don't think the scanner made it look very nice. It's like low-key blurry. I decay. I'm stressing. Oh my god, the fact that it passed quality standards. There we go. Oh my god. Those innocent eyes. I am on the site. It literally says first available appointment is 4th of March 2021. That is fucking ridiculous. And I hope that I can apply for an emergency appointment. Guys, I'm so nervous right now. We're gonna get an appointment before that. These are just some challenges. It's gonna be fun. La Mayo, guys. La Mayo. So it is 10 34, the 10th of January 2021. And I've literally been dealing with all of this visa stuff all weekend. Shout outs to Zoe and her birthday and ripping me out of this whole mess because your girl has been stressed. So quick timeline, my employer filled out the LCA on the 31st of December, 2020. January 8th, it got accepted in the afternoon, rolling over to the 9th of January now where I filled out my D-160 form, put all of that in, tried to book yesterday, for my appointment it says that the earliest appointment is march and i'm just like that is way too long trying to book for march first because the whole process goes that first you have to book a normal appointment and then book an emergency appointment afterwards like plead your case the consulate will look over it and then they'll decide whether it's a good enough explanation and they'll be like yeah or if they say no then your appointment will be march basically because of this whole covid thing you know these consular interviews have been booked out for months and i could only do it once the lca was accepted and all of that kind of stuff so i'm trying to book my appointment yesterday and my card which has never been expired ever expires in a month right and i'm like this 
is gonna be fine. Obviously, it expires 2021 February. It gets declined, you guys. I'm like, this is weird. All right, no worries. I'm just gonna put it in again. You can't do that at the US consulate. You have to pay once, and if that gets declined, you literally have to email them, and within two business days, they will forgive the declined payment and you can process it again. I've been waiting for that to happen, so I asked also my dad for a card. Most of his cards, for some reason, I'm not even joking, my mom and my dad's cards are both expiring on February 2021. Isn't that freaking wild? One of my dad's cards expires 2022. I'm still waiting for a chance to actually pay for my card again the second time. So if that gets declined, I don't know what to do, but it's not going to decline. Why would it decline? So while that's happening, I am writing a 500 word explanation for my expedientment, meaning emergency interview, been looking over how to do all of that today and figuring out like what else you need to provide <laughs> all right let me read you guys my explanation to whom it may concern i would like to please urgently request for my visa appointment consulate interview for the date of january 19th 2021 i work for daily mail australia as a video producer and i need to urgently provide my services at the u.s office a full-time video producer has quit and the employer requires an immediate replacement to cover current breaking u.s news events for this reason the company will suffer greatly without my immediate presence in the u.s I will be needed to pitch stories, produce and edit news videos, support news editors and reporters to source and edit needed videos to be placed in articles. Most of the team is working from home and is experiencing an increased capacity of daily news stories and my three years experience is needed to provide fast and quality results, place as many videos as possible in each article to increase revenue for the company and provide a smooth transition as a new member of the video team. I have three years worth of experience at Daily Mail performing the same role, Daily Mail Australia. Woo! Advertisements placed in videos are the biggest way Daily Mail receives revenue. With my experience of growing video views and revenue at Daily Mail Australia, I will provide my skills and expertise at DailyMail.com, which is a whole other explanation. Going to purchase an actual visa, which is like $300, but for that I need the card to be working correctly and all of that kind of stuff, all gonna work out. It's just a lot. Let me tell you what happened. So last time I talked with you guys, I sent off the D160 and I had troubles booking the consulate for the E3. I was like, man, another two days. I was a wreck. And then I'm like, what if it's not gonna work today? Logged in to just double check to see if the card renewed. It renewed, right? I logged out just so I could double check something. The web page was shown as if I had a rejected payment again, even though I didn't even process the payment. So I'm like, do I have to wait another two days? Finally, I just kept on refreshing. Sometimes if you have like a rejected payment, just keep refreshing the page and it's just bugging out. I refreshed about 10 times and it refreshed, went onto the website, everything worked. Got another card, you know, paid for the embassy interview. The latest normal interview without any expedites is March the 15th. Two days ago, I checked it was the 4th of March. Neither of them is okay. It's like two months, like, two months on top of giving five weeks of resignation like that's three months that's not normal about to apply for my expedited interview now which means that i will get a result tomorrow to see if it's accepted or not if it's not accepted then i can't do anything about it and i have to wait two months like but that's not an option. So this is my emergency request, apply for US visa in Australia. These are all of the options and you do emergency request, tentative travel date, 15th of January. I'm just gonna be sending this off and we'll see how we go. I okay, apologize for looking like a mess. I don't know why, but this lighting is crazy. So it is now the 12th of January, 1.30 p.m. So yesterday was the day where I applied for the expedited request and I'm waiting for the results now. Hopefully it comes through after 24 to 48 hours and then I will let the editorial manager know from New York and we'll go from there. Not gonna lie, I'm freaking stressed. So let's enjoy our walk. been almost 24 hours and 
I haven't had any luck with the US Embassy yet. Hopefully that's going to work out. Guys, I literally feel like I'm out on my ass. I've literally spent this past morning freaking out, calling my friends, figuring out what to do. 8.30 a.m. my emergency visa appointment got denied. So my next appointment or my original appointment is the 15th of March. What I did was provide feedback to the US consulate and ask if I can attach a job offer as well and any you know supporting documents that could help my case even though it's already been denied and you can't keep applying like you can only apply once once it's been denied that's it you have to wait for your normal appointment I need to walk around and just chill go outside I feel like I'm stuck in a box at this point oh my god I'm so genuinely stressed out as long as I know that I'm trying absolutely everything that I can I, I don't know why I got denied I literally work in breaking news I don't understand yeah I'm gonna go for a walk guys I don't know I don't know I just don't know I couldn't tell you <sighs> I'm doing a walk and literally someone just messaged me saying that their appointment got rejected and then after a week I have to do anything and after a week it got accepted so they're like all the best for you I just have a feeling to play the waiting game see how it goes maybe they'll reply to me soon because I did like file a dispute with the US government that sounds very very scandalous I'm just gonna find a patch on the grass and read a book and I can't get over that this beach is literally 20 minutes walk away from me Three hours later. Thank you so much, Gigi. Guys, I'm I'm literally shaking. I have a visa appointment for tomorrow. It was meant to be for the 15th of March. The two months away. I just checked on a whim and I rescheduled my appointment for the 14th of January. That means that I'm potentially going to be quitting Monday morning. But this is a genuine reaction. This happened like two minutes ago so what I have to do I have a folder of everything that I need to print my printer is conveniently not working I'm working from home right now so what I have to do is let my co-workers know that I'm coming into the office and I'm doing a 3 to 12 shift today I'll be rocking up to the office doing 3 to 12 printing out all of my documents I have 19 hours until my visa consulate I don't know what I'm gonna wear oh my god I have to go to office works right now to buy a folder print my job offer and my LCA yeah I need to finish this request start getting ready and get to my job in the city one hour later bruh I, I don't know where to start well like during your birthday they were like rejecting my payment right so I couldn't even book for an appointment I had all oh, of the yeah, forms and stuff I managed to after like two days book it but it went from the earliest appointment being the 4th of March to the 16th to the 15th of March I booked the 15th of March right I applied everything this was two days ago was waiting for my expedited request to get accepted because I was literally scouring all over Australians in NYC on Facebook and everyone's like oh yeah like I got accepted I got accepted and they weren't like like working in like medical fields it was just like I work in a tech company and I just said that like my US employer would suffer greatly without me being here and I'm like oh this is gonna be no issue at all because I work literally in breaking news and like one of the bullet points is literally if you work in breaking news like you are eligible for this so I said that so many times it got fucking rejected this morning dude Why did it get rejected? I don't know. This is a fucking roller coaster. Emailed them and they were like, oh, unfortunately, the reasoning that you provided was not eligible. And they're like, but like, keep on checking. You can reschedule an appointment three times, like in case someone cancels, like just keep checking. This is like an hour ago. I just check and then there's an appointment for tomorrow morning. There's one for tomorrow and for the 26th of February. And I'm like, I have to fucking do this. I booked it. Yes. Oh my God, that's so exciting. Thank you so much for like, supporting me. Oh my god, what a roller coaster. That's so exciting that it's like panned out well. An actual roller coaster within the span yeah, of like... I told you that. Yeah, they're that super... Like I know. It's like everything worked out perfectly. Fuck. So stressful. Okay, so right now it is 8.41 p.m. And 
I was just sorting out my document and so now I'm gonna head to office work and get myself one of those visa black folders and then I'm gonna head off to work let my colleague know this is like all of my lunch break so luckily I live pretty close I have to print everything out organize all of the files got this I'm going to work I came home at about 2.30 a.m. It is now 4 a.m. Time flies when you're gathering documents. And I have a lot of them. I have 20 documents. And I can't believe I gathered them all in the space of like 24 hours. So, this is them. The only thing that I don't have is my birth certificate, which I don't know. I'm going to double check with my mom tomorrow when I wake up. Uh, but I think it's fine because I have both my passport. Thank God. So they don't allow big bags. So I'm bringing this with my face mask and a book because they don't allow electronics. And this is my degree. My visa is going to get accepted tomorrow. And I have to straighten my hair, do my makeup, iron my clothes, get there. I literally live like 20 minutes away from the consulate. So I'm so lucky. I'm going to have four hours of sleep. So... Let's see how that goes tomorrow. I'm not nervous, I'm excited. I thought I was gonna only do this interview in two months and it's happening tomorrow. I am an hour away from my visa consulate interview. This is what I'm wearing. Sorry for the blur, sorry for the messy, messy room, but I'm wearing a button up shirt that's all black and work pants and work boots. Documents, I hope that I have everything. And this is my real degree. I don't know why I said real degree because I have copies here, guys. I'm nervous. Let's go. Later. I got my visa accepted, guys. It is 12.46 the 14th of January and 24 hours ago I didn't even know if I was going to go to New York because I wasn't sure if two months from now would have been too late for me to go to the interview if dailymail.com would have been waiting for me this thing I told myself I wasn't going to get a five plus dollar coffee but number one I need to treat myself number two I'm on four hours of sleep number three I full-on deserve it number four I'm gonna be living in New York so the coffee isn't gonna be as good so sorry about it oh my god if I had at least one video I'm like tearing up for some reason just because I'm like I'm thinking about like someone who like is like it's hard for them and maybe they don't want to get a lawyer or maybe they can't afford one or whatever the case may be and like they just go on YouTube and there's no like videos about E3 visas and I'm like I'm grateful to be telling you guys about this now I love how I'm not even crying about my E3 visa I'm crying about the fact that I can make a video for you guys and like if one person it has to do this and like this helps them that would be great what happened to the consulate first of all it's like a massive f around the russian embassy is like a freaking castle in paddington and you just walk right on in and it's easy the u.s consulate is in the mlc building which because it's under construction at the moment there's different ins and outs of it thank god i came in at 10 20 into the building i had to figure out where i wanted i needed to go i went through the food court side and they're like mlc building lobby here and it like kept on pointing to arrows it felt like a little bit of an airport go inside go inside try to find the lobby there's like a lobby but it doesn't look official like it looks a bit janky and i like want to come up and ask them but i don't and i just walk over to where it says lifts but there's like one tiny little lift and i'm like all right i'm just gonna wait until 10 because i'm thinking that this is the lift to go up to level 10 where the embassy is and i'm waiting for that lift i'm like all right i'm gonna go up there at 10 40 exactly you can't be over 15 minutes earlier and obviously you can't be a minute later so i was like all right i'm just gonna wait until 10 40 just to be safe wait until 10 40 and there was like a family walking past me and they looked like they were going to like the u.s consulate too and the little girl like tapped her mom and was like mommy mommy and said something and they like looked at me and then they went to the reception asked and then like went up another side and i'm just like oh do i go on this side like am i going the wrong way and I'm like oh screw it. i'm just gonna like go my own way press the lift and it only goes up to like level eight and so i just like followed the family up and it was like the real ass big ass lobby you go into level 10 and i thought like the whole for some reason level was gonna be the u.s embassy i don't know why because that whole level is freaking huge but it was literally just like a set there was like childcare, like 
like shops and it was like so chill I'm like what the hell like where am I am I in the right building and then it says like US Embassy this way and I'm just following the arrows and it's like tight and then it brings me into like the tiny little narrowest lobby and I'm just like oh my god this is like scary and I'm like walking in there it's like US Embassy this way. I'm like how long do I have to walk I like literally made it at like 10 50 a.m. and my thing is at 11 a.m. this man looked like he was like 21 or something like he looked pretty young maybe 25 like maybe my age and he's like hi uh what visa are you here for i'm like e3 visa and he's like what time and i'm like 11 a.m and he's like yep make sure to read these five questions and say yes or no to them and i'm like what questions i didn't say that i'm trying to look and it's like kind of like i had to walk around where the lanyard is to read it i'm like where do i go he's like oh just like here and i had like walk around and i'm like reading it taking me like three minutes because he's like watching me and i'm like reading it and i'm like no because all of the questions are like do you have covid do you have symptoms of covid have you been out of the country for the past two weeks all that uh and i'm like no and he's like to which question and i'm like oh am i like to all of them and he's like oh like can you please read all of the questions and say yes or no each time and i'm like pretending like i haven't even read it for some reason and i'm like question one no question two no and he's like okay blah. like i finished it and then he's like please enter so i'm like going to the very left and there's like a blonde lady that's like maybe 35 so i walk in and she's like please uh give me your lca letter and your australian passport like i have this right here and i'm just like god damn like did i have to choose this folder maybe it would have been easier but these like compartments are so easy to look in so i'm just like okay i remember that my lca form is the first one because i did my research and like they all they care about apparently is like the lca form and the australian passport so i'm like here you go and then i was like oh um okay where is my australian passport oh my god and i'm like oh yep here you go and she's like looking at the lca form like literally looking at absolutely every single paper like yep 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 and then she's like looking at my Sean passport puts it down clasps it together he's like she's like here you go please like continue onwards and there's kind of like i don't know like a band of people and there's like all these different like compartments sort of and the next person's like do you have any electronics i'm like just my phone and they're like okay um do you have heels on and i'm just like no and then they look at my shoes and i'm kind of like showing them and they're like please take your shoes off like they were like oh you have heels on it was like literally like i'm like honey that's not even a heel I'm like i didn't think it was a heel but okay that's fine oh my god i'm ah! anyways okay so let me let let, let let me continue oh my god girl i take my shoes off and then i'm putting my bag on one tray my shoes on the other tray and they like x-ray everything and then they're like please step through that like that x-ray machine thing that like the airports have go in there and they're like yeah please stand on the white band uh so i walk over to the woman at the desk and there's like there's like one man and like three women and they're all looking at me to see like how i'm like pulling the files out my mask was in the way so i literally could not even see like when i was putting the trying to find the australian passport i couldn't even see i was like trying to put it down like but if i put it down are they gonna yell at me and they're like looking at my mannerisms like and i was nervous like i was like i had nervous ass mannerisms but that's like understandable because you're like at an embassy this is like real like stuff but like if you look too suspect then they'll be like why is she so suspect but like it's understandable if you're like a little bit i was like shaking but it was fine like there's like five people in the room everything is empty and they're just like looking at you so i'm like standing at the very edge now and the guy's like please come back to retrieve your bag here is your number and follow the gentleman over there and he will escort you i'm like okay thank you and those guys were like the strictest out of everyone like the guy that was like asking me to read the questions was so nice i'm not like say like of, like you should be of course strict like totally understandable but i'm just saying like the much older gentleman with his uniform was like okay like come up to this lift press the lift for me and he's like please go in oh my pants there's like a string on them to like tie it so it could be tight for some reason they just undid and my freaking string was like dangling on the floor and i'm just like how am I going to fix this? Because I didn't know where I was going. Like, what if the next person I saw was going to interview me? I had no idea what was happening. And I'm like, maybe this guy is going to go into the lift with me. I'm not going to put it in. I'm not going to, like, tie my freaking pants while he's in there with me. Like, so I'm, like, going into the lift and he doesn't escort me. He's like, okay, like, 
bye basically like he's like okay like go up um and there's like a man like there but he wasn't in uniform or anything he was like kind of on his phone he didn't really care like in the lift with me and we started to go up i'm like whoop like it went all the way to the top floor i'm all the way up and he was like looking at his phone he just so like like quickly like putting the strings in like to make sure that everything was okay tucked everything in I walk in and there's like a room like if you've been to like Centrelink or whatever it's just like a normal kind of room like that that's like there's like booths I thought I'd have to like go into a room or something but thank god that would have been way more intimidating I'm sitting there and the man at desk number six he's straight ahead of me and there's like all these desks and I'm just like all these chairs and I'm just like looking at my ticket and I look up at him and I'm trying to find like desk number three and it was like blocked off by the back barricades and he like looks up to me and he's like and he's like, he's like a man in his 50s. And so I walk into desk number three and then he's like, uh, please can I get your LCA number, your LCA form? And I hand it to him and he's like, and it was like banned up with the Australian passport. I like give it to him and he's like, thank you. He asked me something else I think, but like the only thing I remember is like, were you born in Russia? And I'm just like, yes. And then in my head, I was like, oh my God, is that gonna be a problem? <laughs> like I was so scared, but um, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, no, I'm not gonna get let in because I was born in Russia. <laughs> I don't know why, it's so dumb. He's like, please sit down and someone will be with you shortly. So I sit back down to where I was sitting and the man now was talking to the guy that was in the line and I'm hearing like the man, the man that was standing in the line being like, yeah, so like uh, my family is from China. I just came back from China. And then the guy's like, oh, like what? And he's like, yeah, like my consulate, obviously like all the consulates are still closed in china so you know i obviously quarantined for two weeks here and it's all fine that's what i heard they've said something else i don't remember and then he's like approved like loudly and then he's like okay thank you and then he's like trying to walk and the guy behind the desk is looking to me now and he's like have you been to the desk number three and while he's saying that the guy that was just being served like goes back he's like what sorry what and then I don't know why he was at the visa consulate he had like a thick like american accent but maybe i don't know and then the guy said no i'm not talking to you like thank you so much like i'm talking to this woman i'm like oh i've been to the desk before and he's like and i'm like oh and so i woke up and he's like have you been to desk number three i'm like yeah i've been there i was just told to sit back down and he's like looking around and he's like oh the form is here i didn't realize this was you okay and i'm like oh, no worries <laughs> but he was like super chill about it he was like laughing like he was super nice like he saw that i was nervous and i think he was like trying to calm my nerves which i've never heard before like i am on facebook like australians in nyc facebook page and everyone's like i try to crack jokes with them i try to be super nice with them and they're like but this guy was super nice and i'm so lucky because like it, it did make it feel a lot easier uh but I was shocked because I thought this is like the oh I'm just putting in your details before we go into the room. But it was none of that. This was the interview, and I like wasn't. I was like, is, oh, this is the interview. So he's like, oh, okay, this is you. And then he's like, Cameron, how do you pronounce your last name? And I'm like, Cameron Sky. And he's like, oh, you make it sound a lot easier than it looks. He's like looking at my LCA form, and then he's like, do you have a job offer letter? And I'm like, I give it to him, and he's like, reading, and he's like, video producer at Daily Mail so what are you going to be doing and I'm just like mostly I'll be editing and producing and packaging videos that are break, uh, breaking news style videos I don't, and I'm like I don't know why I said mostly that's literally all I'm going to be doing oh I can't take it back but whatever so he's like okay and so he's like thoroughly reading the job off letter and then he's like starting to like put down all of the details in his computer. Sorry, he looked at my Australian passport first and then he looked at my job offer. But when he was looking at the Australian passport, he's like, oh, so you've been to Japan? And I'm just like, yeah. And he's like, um, oh, so do you know how to speak Japanese? And I'm like, I wish. And then we laugh. He's like looking at the page, he's like, oh, so you've been to the States before. Was that for a business or for tourism? And I'm just like, for tourism. He's like, okay. Um, and then yeah, job offer. And then he's like, so where are you gonna be working? And I'm just like, Manhattan, New York. I'm like, why did I say Manhattan? Like, New York, just New York City. Um, but I was like, Manhattan, New York. And he's like, New York. <laughs> I'm like, oh God. Cause it's like COVID, right? He didn't ask me for any other documentation, just the job offer and he was like, typing away in his computer. And then he's like, your visa has been accepted. The physical copy will be sent to you in 10 days along with your Australian passport. It will come in this package. And I'm just like, 
you. Thank you so much. And then I had the ticket where I had to collect my phone. I was so nervous. I was like, do I give this to you? Because I forgot what it was for. I was like, my brain was just turned to mush. And he's like, that's for downstairs to like get your things back. And I was like, oh yeah, thank you so much. <sighs> but yeah, and it got accepted. Like they like only asked me like one question about the job and where I'm going to be working and that's it was not expecting to be asked if I know how to speak Japanese but was not expecting to be cracking jokes with the US consular but you know it is what it is if your exemption or your emergency interview gets denied just keep on checking for free appointments because I was so panicked I forgot to do that and when I emailed the US consulate they advised me to do that and I'm just like they're so nice and they're like so helpful so and it worked out so much better because the emergency appointment would have been a little bit later and then this one was literally like in like 12 hours or something within me booking it or like a couple like I don't know, I don't know 20 hours something anyways I'm gonna be doing all that and then I have work at 3 p.m. so I'll see you soon hey guys excuse the mess and excuse the no makeup I am working from home today because I was waiting for my parcel to come in I was meant to be in the office this week but I asked to stay at home for this day just so I can get this. I was so freaked out because the consulate was like, if you do not get this, then we're gonna like apply all these fees and it, there's gonna be delays in the visa. I was so worried because I always have issues with tolls. I never hear toll when they ring and I have to go to some really weird spot to collect it. And none of that happened. I got it really quickly. So let's open this up. I should be having my physical visa copy inside of my passport. Oh my god. That's so cool. Okay, I thought it was going to be like this really cool like aesthetic looking thing. Oh my god, it is. Oh my god. I was like, okay, you can't really. I don't want to like show any of my details, but this is my last name. And it says E3 at the back. So I'm like, oh, this is it. Guys. I'm not going to be showing anything. I got my visa, guys. This has been like two years in the making. I'm so happy. So I'm going to be scanning this now. And I'm going to scan my Commonwealth statutory declaration. I signed it yesterday with a registered nurse. And I'm so, so, so excited because everything's coming together. What I heard from Australians in NYC is that you can always pick the three months or more because Australia essentially doesn't care if you're leaving the country. They just don't want you to be coming back. Feel free to comment down below or DM me uh, because I would love to help like anyone to do with this because it's such like a niche visa for such a niche situation. So there's not a whole lot of information about it so i'd love to help as many people out as possible i am having my lunch right now guys this is the randomest thing ever i'm eating a freaking lobster we're being bougie today and a salad we're being healthy today and i'm gonna go back to work right now i wanted to also really quickly show you guys the toll sort of system of delivery so this is how it looks like it says shipment created 19th of january and this is basically the process picked up in transit app for delivery so you want to make sure to keep an eye on this when you get a text message from the government and toll i was really scared because i thought i was going to miss it trust me you are not going to miss this the government is going to text you the government is going to email you and toll is going to email you too with the tracking number hey guys it is still the 20th of january 7 33 p.m and i am about to send off my exemption to travel i want to walk you through it in case you're doing the same thing and you're confused it's pretty straightforward so this is the COVID-19 request form and basically I just wrote American citizen American citizen hello Australian citizen and I need to depart Australia I need an exemption to travel to Australia and I am an Australian citizen. So please explain why you are requesting a travel exemption. So basically, this is what I wrote. To whom it may concern, I would like to please request an exemption to fly to the United States on a long-term work-related basis. I will not be planning to fly back to Australia for two years as I will be working in the US at that time. Purpose for travel. I said traveling overseas for a compelling reason. Now, either I am traveling overseas for a compelling reason for at least three months or I am traveling for business, but apparently it's a lot better better to do this one as it gets accepted within 24 hours so i've heard and so it says evidence is required for people traveling request without all required evidence including commonwealth statutory 
declaration will not be approved so basically they need that form which I have done with the right registered person basically read all through these tick 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 and then here are the travelers in this request so it's just one person so I wrote individual worker given name my passport number all of this information everything else is not required and this is what I attached so this is the most important thing job offer Australian passport your visa and the Commonwealth statutory declaration I have not and I will never be stressed about specifically applying for an exemption because I have all the documents, I have such a good case, obviously. So I hope that helped and I will give you guys an update. The next steps are to wait until this gets accepted, which will be in 24 hours. I don't have to worry about YouTube for the next. Thank you for your request. We have received your request for an exemption from Australia's current travel restrictions. Hey guys, I have a bridal shower to go to, but it is the 23rd of January. I woke up today on a Saturday morning to an email of Australian Border Force basically declining my exemption. I thought I was gonna have, you know, big potentiality to have problems at the US consulate, big potentiality to have problems with my employer, you know, there's lots of steps to get through. But an exemption to fly out of the fucking country? Basically, I'm gonna go into work, fill out the form again. I'm like four weeks out to flying out, or like three weeks. So I'll explain everything soon, but I didn't fill out a form correctly, I'm pretty sure. If this doesn't get accepted, I don't know what to do, but it should be because I, I just didn't do one thing properly. But yeah, I'll get that done on Monday, it'll be fine. But right now, I'm freaking out. <laughs> hey guys, today is the 27th of January, 9.30 a.m. I'm currently at work. And I applied for my second exemption. I applied about 5 p.m. on the 25th of January. I'm expecting it to get accepted tomorrow morning and then I'm gonna be buying my flights, booking my Airbnbs and finally getting ready because I feel like I can't really do anything until my exemption gets accepted. That day when I was applying and the day before that, those were some really rough days, guys. I'm not gonna lie to you, that was really stressful. I was like crying, I was so upset, I'm like what if it's not gonna get accepted and I'm still scared like because it's like well if the Australian government says no then I literally can't go and I've quit my job and that's really scary but I have literally the best explanation ever but I got a postal service man to sign it they have a huge list of people who can sign it and one of them is a postal service person that has been at the post office has been working there for five years and I'm like have you been working here for more than five years and are you a permanent you know worker of the postal service when I was asking him to sign it the other day and he's like I know what I'm doing I wouldn't be signing this form if I wasn't a permanent worker of the postal service and I'm like okay like just making sure because my other one got rejected and he's like yeah I know what I'm doing and I'm like okay no need to give me attitude sir sorry guys I just got busy at work but I didn't vlog because I was genuinely an emotional wreck I was like what is going on I basically have three weeks almost two weeks to fly out and I don't have a plane ticket I don't have an Airbnb I'm just waiting for the Australian government to let me know you know that I'm allowed to go. The thing is that this Commonwealth statutory declaration form, it's basically an affidavit. Like someone has to sign off on you saying that I'm leaving, I'm going out of the country and I'm not coming back for three months. I'm not coming back for two years. I know this is a fact. I filled out the form incorrectly. But the thing is, this form was only compulsory after like two weeks. No one online even knows about it yet. Like I have scoured the internet and so for me it was really hard and it was really confusing to fill out. That's why I got rejected because I was meant to say I am not going out of the country. I was meant to put all of my details at the top and then got the other person to sign for it at the bottom. I did the other way around. I got the person to fill out the top and then I signed at the bottom. That's why I got rejected. I'm just hoping that it's all gonna work but I'm manifesting and I know it's gonna get accepted. Like why would it not get accepted? I attached my visa. I attached my job offer. I attached my bank statements to say I have enough savings on my account. I attached my soul. And my bloodline and the history of my entire family no I'm joking also I have my two suitcases with all of my documents in there got them both from Kmart $70 and I don't remember because I got it from ages ago and I'm basically just ready to pull the trigger of cancelling my gym membership cancelling an account of my bank and letting them know that I'm going overseas Cancelling my phone bill, all of that stuff. Buying a ticket, getting an Airbnb, letting my employer know, my flight dates, and figuring out my start date. But I'm just waiting for this exemption. This is why I'm so annoyed. Hurry up! 346 minutes later. <laughs> I 
I'm moving to New York. It just got accepted at 1.42, well, let me see, 8 minutes ago, 1.34 p.m., so not even 48 hours later. I'm moving to New York, and you'd expect me to think that when my visa got accepted, but this is the last step. And it got rejected for the first time and genuinely I was like, okay, well maybe I'm not going to be able to fly to New York, like, I've quit Daily Mail, like, and it got accepted. I mean, why wouldn't it? But I thought I'd have to wait another day and I was getting so agitated, like, I have been positive for the past, like, year and a half, two years, and it's finally happened. And everything happens for a reason. Everything is happening in divine timing. From this point on, looking back those two years, I was not ready. I was meant to learn so many things. And I feel so protected because I didn't fly out when I wanted to fly out, when all the scary coronavirus stuff happened. The first person I called was my dad because he's just been like super supporting, like asking me nonstop every day, like what's happening? Because obviously like my mom wants me to be happy and do whatever, but she's just like, I don't want my baby to go up. And my dad's like, yeah, girl, you get it. I'm moving to New York. I gotta go back to work and feed my dog, but I'm buying the Airbnb and my plane ticket and I need to email, like everything was stopping me. Like now I have to do all of this stuff. How long do I have? 27th of January. I still have three weeks and one day. Oh my God, I feel so lucky. <laughs> Dreams come true, you guys. And this is just the beginning. Like, I feel like my life has just started. And I feel like I would this would have happened as soon as I turned 24. But then COVID hit. Vaccines are rolling out. Joe Biden is president. This could not have come at a more perfect time. And I know that it's going to get better very soon. Look at me. I did this unironically. Two hours later. Oh my god. This dream board has been sitting on my wall for exactly a year straight. We're going to New York! Guys, I just finished work. I'm buying my one-way ticket from Sydney to JFK, 20th of February, 11.20 a.m. I ordered these seats as well. <laughs> okay, so the 20th of February, I finish on the 18th, gonna get my COVID vaccination on the 19th and booking my flight for the 20th. Sydney to Los Angeles, Los Angeles to New York. Uh, we're going to New York. Yeah. 